Praise the Lord. Welcome to the house of the Lord. As we begin, we're going to sing him 545, Savior like a shepherd lead us, the first and the last stanza. Just feed us for our days our thoughts prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast brought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. everyone and happy Sabbath to you so here we say happy Sabbath and then you you say happy day I want to read from the the last book of the Bible Revelation and uh, chapter 21 the first verses in chapter 21 now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And I like this, this fourth verse so much. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So with these words, I welcome you to today's service. We look forward to that time 
when God is going to make all things new. If I, if I ask you this morning, are there things in your life that you, you wish God can make new? I know there are, there are many answers you could give. I have a lot of them. So we, we come to church every Sabbath with the hope and faith that a day is coming when God is going to make all things new. And by the way, it is not going to be the way we know life. You know, sometimes I try to imagine what life would be if the world and the earth made new. It beats my imagination. Uh, it's, it's something you can do when you, when you have your time, your quiet time. Uh, try to imagine what life would be without all the troubles we have in our world today. There will be no more wars. At least there will be no more wars. That's what I'm sure. I don't know if there will be classes and papers. I'm, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. But, 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 but I, I know we, we will keep learning even in eternity. But I don't know if there will be professors like um, Professor Alice. I don't know if they're going to be there to give you papers and deadlines, you know, to meet with. And uh, I don't know if you have to pay tuition. Eh? I don't know if you have to work a lot, you know, and study at the same time. We have all our troubles, but God is going to make all things new. There will be no more doctors and nurses. I'm sure of that one. I'm sure of that one. Uh, no more antibiotics and uh, the rest of them. No more pain. No matter the kind of pain you feel, no more tears. You know why? God is going to remove the reasons why you have to cry. So with this, I want to prepare your minds for today. When we come to the house of the Lord, let us believe that God is here with us. We'll pray now, and then we kickstart with music. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We know that before we came this morning, you were already here. And your presence will be with us. So we pray for our, our fellowship today. We pray for your blessings. We pray for your healing. We pray for the forgiveness of our sins. We have come with different burdens. We've come with different problems. We we put them down at the foot of the cross because we know there is power in the blood of a lamb. So, Father, today we commit the preacher, the singers, those at the technical end, the worshipers. We commit all the prayers that will be said here today. May they be like a sweet smelling servo before you. This is our prayer this morning, for we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall continue with our singing and let's stand up right now to sing the first hymn, Faith is the Victory that Overcomes the World.
The next song is Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory of the Lord. the first and the last stanza. Jesus, what a friend for sinners.
please seating. Now is the time for prayer, and uh, that is a special time in our service that we take time to pray for specials. Please pray for the week of spiritual emphasis. That is, uh, this time, this springtime, it will be in, in German, but also translated in English. Everyone is invited. The speaker is now a pastor in the area of Frankfurt. He's born in Spain, grew up in Spain, but his parents are German. So he studied and goes to school in Spain and speak, he speaks perfect Spain, but also German and English. So, what I, what I see is that he has inspiring topics for the next week. Everyone is invited. And I please pray for this week that we are get closer to Jesus, that we can more connect in this relationship. We have more prayers. We have so many families here on campus. We have, by the students, more than 30 couples. More than 30 couples. Pray for them. In the afternoon today, we have a meeting for couples. We call it now the team where we organize it. They say, let it, know, let it say T for two. So it is tea time at 3.30 in the afternoon in Stutz today. We have more reason to pray, maybe especially for our families at home. We have a need. We have a lot of students here. They are not single, but they stay here without family. That is not easy. Let us pray for those. Sometimes even our studying can be a challenge, often when it comes to an end. Let us pray we have the summer semester. Do you have some prayers what you would like to announce now so that we can pray? We will pray in small groups in the end. And I will finish in a loud prayer. Do you have a prayer request where others can also pray for? I can tell you we have, uh, every Wednesday we have a Zoom prayer time at six o'clock in English. And uh, I didn't know if I shall say it or not. And in the end I told them, please pray for me, I'm COVID positive. Maybe that tomorrow I'm negative. Now I'm in COVID since one week. And for my person who knows me, I am so boring when I can do nothing. And uh, it's not easy to, uh, for me to be patient, geduldig. Oh. I pray every time, please give me patience, but now. So, but I'm so happy because the One Year for Jesus team is here and it's doing by Zoom, it is so difficult. We have the prayer week, and not to be allowed to join them, it's so difficult for me. Yes, do you have a prayer where we can pray for? My last remembering is uh, for the One Year for Jesus team, you see them in the back second line here. They are sitting together. Yes, all together.
pray for them so that they can learn, understand, but also get closer in this year with Jesus. And that they can also decide what they will do in, her, in their future after one year for Jesus. Pray for them. Okay, now we have the time for small groups, three or four person, put together and take time to pray. Maybe for your personal things also. And if you are ready, Please sit and be silent. Then I can see when we can finish our prayer time with a loud prayer. Now is the time to pray.
Let us stand up for the final prayer. Jesus, we open our heart to you and you heard our requests. Let us understand how you answer. Let us see how you can guide us in the future. Let us have the right thoughts and the right feeling and the right heart to follow you and to feel connected with you. You heard everything. Please answer our question, request. And sometimes we feel lost. Let us see that you carry a through difficult time, that you give us the joy in our heart, even the circumstances are not so well. We pray for our families, we pray for our couples, we pray for our singles here on campus, that you are close to them. We pray for those who are looking for you with a lot of question in their heart. Open their mind and heart to understand you so that they are believing growth in you, that they are open for your answers. We pray for the next week, for the week of spiritual emphasis. Let it be a blessing and open everyone a door to understand, to see you. We like to see you, Jesus sometimes in our heart, sometimes in our mind. But once we will see you with our eyes, and that is where we are looking for. Thank you that you are near and that you will come back. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy, happy Sabbath. Let me see my hands if you are happy. Okay, good. I'm happy because when I got to Grabo, I heard, my, I heard my Barbara laughing. Then I saw today church would be very nice. And you heard it, yeah, when I got to Grabo. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time since we met ourselves, and we want to um, get up and greet each other, welcome each other. Some people, it's been one month, two months, two weeks, and we are glad to see you. And so please, uh, we have just two minutes, just get up, greet as many as uh, you can, and say you are welcome, and we hope to see you next week. Shall we please rise? Yeah.
Happy Sabbath. Good. I can see we've been all been uh, energized and we are happy in the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. It's now time for our announcements. Uh, as this uh, Ditsma already said, this week, in the coming week, we have our week of prayer and it starts at 7.30 in the Shauna. So uh, we encourage each and everyone to come and partake and also join so that we can pray together. Uh, because of that next Sabbath, church service, is, we're having a joint service, and it's starting at 10 a.m., not our usual um, 11.30. So please, let's come early. If you come late, by the time you get here, uh, they'll be saying the benediction. So please, it's 10 a.m., not 11.30. Uh, for those of you who need the hard copies of the Sabbath school, for the next two quarters, that is from um, July till December, uh, we want to place the order, so please, this is the last week. If you need one, just uh, contact me so that we can send the request and we, uh, you get the, um, your Sabbath school. Usually the cost is around 12 euros or 15 euros within um, that range. So if you need one, you can just uh, contact me. On 21st, uh, there is a vowed love. Uh, usually every year we have this uh, activity for students, workers. Uh, we just run through the the woods and make um, contributions or use it to solicit for funds to support the various uh, uh, kids or homes that or people who are in need of money so they collect some small small monies to support them and so we also want to encourage you if you can't run you can contribute your money to support someone who wants to run like myself I can run very well so if you can't run uh, you just uh, put money uh, to support me so that I can uh, go more rounds uh, uh, for you. Also, those of you who are interested in the greenhouse, tomorrow at 3 o'clock, uh, we are meeting uh, at the greenhouse so that everyone can, if you are interested in uh, planting something during the summer, if you want to eat something organic, then I encourage you to uh, come tomorrow at 3 p.m. We will meet there together divide the plots, you get your own, and plant whatever thing that you want to plant. Um, today our potluck is at 1.30. Uh, we're having it in the streets, but uh, we have to leave there by 3 uh, p.m. because of the program. And so for those of you who come late, um, please try and come early. Barbara has promised she's coming early today, so please, no one should be late today because you have to leave there by 3 o'clock. If you come at 2.30, by the time you come, we are full. So you have to take your food home, and you don't want that to happen. So please try and come very early so that we can finish early and for uh, the next activity to go on. Also, um, Alex has an announcement, and I'll urge him to come and then share with us. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, church. Dear brothers and sisters, four weeks from now, on May 4th this year, we will have a public broadcast from Friedensau Adventist Church service. More than 500,000 people will be watching. You are invited to be part, to take part. Moreover, you are invited to become part of it literally. As a participant here in church or as a chorister here to my left. Matei and Itje, who are in charge for the music, are waiting for you. You are more than welcome and if there is no space in the in the choir, we will make space. Promise. Save the date. Make sure that you are there as a testimony of your faith. As an ambassador for our church family here that homes actually 42 nations from all over the world. People not only in Grabo need to know this.
God is good. People need to know this too. So here from the campus of Friedenstein Adventist University, may I count on you? Amen. Amen. Thank you. May 4th, 9.30 on time. Thank you. So, uh, I um, yesterday I didn't know that I have the children's story today, <laughs> so it's a bit <laughs> spontaneous. <laughs> Moses went to the king of Egypt. And he said, God has spoken to me. Let my people go. Let the people of Israel go out of Egypt. But the king answered, no, I don't know of God. I don't let them go. But then God sent frogs which were jumping in the bed of the king. He sent mosquitoes biting him everywhere. He sent locusts eating all his plants. And he sent flies flying in the ear <laughs> and other terrible things. The king should let... Um, should let the people go. Then all the terrible things have a result. So the king shouted, disappear, go, go with your people, take all your sheep, take everything with you and go. So then the Israel went with Moses, but soon they came to an ocean, and there was no boat, there was no bridge. How should they go over the ocean? And then they heard a terrible noise behind them. It sounded like thunder, but it was even worse. The army of the king were coming, was coming, and they wanted to get the Israelites back. So then the people were afraid, and they, tr they started to cry. What shall we do? And Moses said, don't, 
don't be afraid, God will make a way. So he hold his stick over the water, and the water separated. And suddenly there was a street through the water. And to the right and to the left, it was like a wall made of water. And they saw the fish like in an aquarium. Yeah, maybe now you can hold up and show the, the other people what the Israelites have seen. Yeah, a lot of fish. So then they came to the other side and they realized, oh, the, the soldiers are coming behind them. And then... Moses again took his stick and the walls of water came down and the water took the whole army away with the waves. They will never do any harm to the people of Israelites again. So the people were very happy that they are safe and uh, that they can continue their way. And you can go now and paint the aquarium and think of the story. Okay? We're going to sing um, 632 as our next song. And as we are singing this song, we're going to be collecting our offering. Okay. Go! 
that cost me love, but until then, my heart will go on singing until then with joy. now as we sing the song that will welcome our preacher let's rise up 200 seats is our next song we're singing the first and the last stanza As you said, would you open with me to our test for this morning, or this afternoon, rather? Deuteronomy. When last did you read from the book of Deuteronomy? <laughs> We're going to read from Deuteronomy. I urge you to open your Bibles, electronic, any version you have. It's time to read the Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Uh, we read two verses, um, verse 30 and verse 31. Are you there? We have to read together, church. Deuteronomy chapter one, chapter 1, 
um, verses 30 and 31. The Bible says, The Lord your God, who goes before you, he will fight for you. According to all he did for you in Egypt before your eyes, and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a man carries his son in all the way that you went until you came to this place. Amen. Amen. So this morning I have the, um, the privilege to introduce uh, the preacher for the day. She is a woman of God. That's uh, my own personal experience with her. Uh, you, can hardly, you can hardly go through Freedom Sour without uh, encountering Renata. And I know all of you have your, uh, the stories of your encounter with her. It's always a warm and loving encounter. So she's not just a, a preacher, she's a, a woman of God. She's someone who loves people, who is always willing to help people. So um, when, when she speaks, she speaks from her heart. And I, I, you're one of my favorite preachers. I like listening to you. So would you please come up and I pray for you. I'm not going to ask you questions, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, this is your daughter and these are your people. Now it is time for us to listen to you from heaven. I pray that you will cover your daughter with your robe of righteousness. As we listen today, may we hear the voice of God. And may the words she will speak um, pierce through our heart and make us whole today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Happy to see you. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> I don't know about you in April. My longing for summer is constantly growing. And you also longing for warmth and sunshine today. We are really surprised. Well, a few years ago, my longing was quite strong. And I was looking for a destination as far south as possible. According to the motto, the, for, the further south, the more sun. I searched for the cheapest flight to the south. And I found Eilat on the Red Sea. I was really excited. Israel! I have always wanted to go there. Then I began to search for the cheapest possible accommodation. Ditma will make eyes. I was sure of it. Do you want to know what I found? I thought long about whether I should even tell my husband. <laughs> In the end, he would catch fire for the idea. The very cheapest accommodation was a lonely Bedouin tent in the middle of a huge stone desert. I know there are enthusiastic Jordan researchers here. You have my deepest respect. But my shock was so great that I quickly turned back to Southern Europe. Some time ago, there were people on the Red Sea, and it is and in this very rocky desert. They had anything but a vacation in mind. These people were waiting. They were in a waiting loop, a waiting loop of 40 years. In the past, they had had a vision, a real destination, Canaan. But many of them knew they would never reach this destination. And the worst thing was, they had messed it up themselves. Some of them were probably in the same mood as ever, dissatisfied with everything and constantly complaining. Others spent quiet minutes 
thinking about how this waiting loop had come at all. How could the situation have escalated like this? And what could they teach their children to prevent them from making the same mistake? The memories run like a movie clip. What God had not done to get them out of a hopeless situation, out of slavery in Egypt. We just heard it in the children's story, uh, what God had sent. And uh, then they were free at last, and yet immediately trapped again in a dead end. In front of them, the sea of reeds, behind them, the army of the Egyptian close on their heels. But even in this desperate situation, God provided a way out. They were able to walk through the Red Sea like through an aquarium. The Bible says on their right and on their left, the waters spilled up like a wall. An elderly man was reading the Bible on a park bench and exclaimed, Hallelujah, God is so great. He is a God who does miracles. When kindly asked what he meant, he replied, God has performed a miracle and opened a way through the Red Sea. He was instructed that he should understand this differently that there was little water at the moment anyway, and if there was any, it was at most knee deep. After a short time, however, the man called out again, hallelujah, God is so great. He is a God who does miracles. He was asked why he was shouting the same thing again. He replied, Oh, God has performed a miracle. Even though the water was only knee-deep, not a single Egyptian was left alive. Now it says here in Exodus 14, verse 31, when the Israelites, Israelites realized that the Lord had defeated the Egyptians with great power, they were awestruck. They trusted him and his servant Moses. This verse took me completely by surprise. It would actually be a wonderful final sentence, uh, sentence to an exciting story. The Israelites, awestruck, trusted God and his servant Moses. I wish the story could end here. We could go home encouraged by a happy end. For me, it would be also okay if the story went on like this. The Israelites, awestruck, trusted God and his servant Moses, and they did so even when they faced other challenges. But unfortunately, the story took on a very different dynamic. Again and again, the Israelites reacted with grumbling and mistrust. Reading this makes you want to jump in the story and to shake them. They experienced one miracle after another. Why were they constantly complaining? Why did they always want to go back to Egypt? And above all, why did they no longer have any trust? Where had they lost it? In the beginning, they still trusted. What about trust? Is trust like a piece of paper crumbled up once and it will never be perfect again? Or is trust like a switch? Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. How does trust develop? That's what today is all about. How can I build trust? 
and when is trust destroyed? Trust is the beginning of everything. Finan financial experts used this to um, use this slogan to advertise. People trusted them and sought their advice. The, ex the experts almost selflessly helped them to increase their wealth until the great financial crisis came along and shook their confidence. Many felt betrayed and sold out. Trust is the basis for our personal relationships. But how many people today experience their trust in a person being totally betrayed? Great love breaks up, some friendships no longer hold. Trust is often demanded in the working place and it creates, of course, a productive atmosphere. But even there, some people no longer feel reliability. Only numbers decide. So how can we find and build trust in this world, in our environment? Let's go back in our minds to the Red Sea. There is a study on trust in the various professions. If only Moses had been a fireman, then people would have trusted him 96% of the time. But I suspect they didn't see Moses as much more than a tour guide. Unfortunately, he can only count on 27% trust, which is still more than a politician with 14%. Moses clearly felt the mistrust of the Israelites. Why did they repeatedly experience this breaking of trust? They also lost their trust in God. They came from slavery. Trust was not a big issue there. They were exploited and mistreated. According to Theodore Storm, nothing shakes trust more than the feeling of being treated unfairly. How often might their basic trust have been betrayed in slavery? They could never feel safe. Even their babies were threatened. What happens to people whose trust is shaken too often? They built up an armor of skepticism and suspicion. They no longer expect anything good from others, so they can no longer be unpleasantly surprised. There is something to be said for that, of course, but it makes you lonely inside. When we read the reports of what went on in the desert, we wonder, when will they finally realize that they can trust God after all? And on the other hand, why does God put effort in people who always throw him overboard. They experienced miracle after miracle. And please, they had his presence constantly before their eyes during the day as a shady cloud, shady cloud, and at night as a warming column of fire. They heard God's voice and experienced something of his glory very close. Did everything have no effect on them? At this point, I would like to pause for a moment. You can get wonderfully upset about others, like the Israelites here. But what about us? What about our trust? Has our trust also been betrayed in some way? 
in such a way that we struggle to invest trust. Perhaps you have sworn to yourself that this will never happen to you again and you have withdrawn completely. Or are you wondering why your trust in God sometimes breaks down so quickly? The good news is God cares about people like you. Just like the Israels back then, he wants to help to build trust. He has even designed your brain with so-called mirror neurons so that it, is, that it can learn to trust. And he wants to heal. Right at the beginning of the journey, God gave the Israelites reliable rules, also some as a protection against certain diseases, but he assured them, I am the God who heals you. This is how he introduced himself to them. I deeply believe that he also wanted to heal the souls of these people who had been disturbed by slavery. He gave them a leap of faith and restored their value. They were no longer just slaves. They were now a very special people, his people. God cared for them. He was visibly and constantly there, protecting and providing them with everything they needed. It was not like an all-round carefree package. Of course, they were sometimes thirsty or hungry or had snakes. But God wanted to teach them that they should turn to him and learn to trust. As a father carries his child, says the Bible, so he brought them through the desert. Now they were there at the border to Canaan. Finally, there where they wanted to go. At first, I thought, why did God actually send out spies? That somehow escalated everything. But Genesis 1... Um, oh, sorry. But the Bible makes it clear the people had asked for spies to explore everything first. Moses liked the suggestion. We like to be inwardly prepared for what is to come. God responded to their wish. So far, he had always gone ahead of them with columns of cloud and fire. They always knew where to go. He had chosen the best pastures for them. He wanted to take them to the land of Canaan, not just to the border. He wanted to go ahead of them with an angel and clear the way for them. So why spies? If we want to make a decision, it is reasonable to gather enough information first. But this was not about a decision, but about trust. Basically, it was their lack of trust that made them think trust is good, control is better. What was the spy mission supposed to be good for? On the one hand, they have, of course, seen the wonderful country and could have been motivated. On the other hand, who wants to be confronted with all the challenges of the future at once? They didn't really rely on what God has promised them. Of course, we like to have everything under control. And yet we get into situations where we just have to trust. For example, you are about to have an operation. 
you are told all the risk and complications beforehand and are asked to sign. You actually want to say, I think I better go home now. But usually you have no choice but to trust and pray that there is an angel behind every person in the operating theater. The 12 spies returned. Some of them probably liked their role as a hero, telling only a few exaggerations here and there. They scared the people with what they said and how they described it. The spies told of high walls, strong people, and giants. In their eyes, we were as small as grasshoppers, and that's how we felt, they said. Would we have felt worried? Probably yes. So what was wrong here? One perspective was missing. God was ready to give them this wonderful land. All they had to do was to go and take possession of it. No would have, now would have been the time to get together all their trust and let God take control. He had encouraged them right from the start that they should not be afraid. One person who stood out here was Caleb. Caleb was chosen by the tribe of Judah as a spy. The Bible calls him a Canaanite. Some therefore think that he was possibly, possibly descended from Kenaz, the grandson of Esau. He would not be the only one in the Bible who is praised for his trust and did not belong directly to the people of Israel. Caleb was prepared to bear responsibility. He was one of the leading men. Caleb was really courageous. The mood changed so dramatically and he was the only one who stood up to it. They were crying the whole night. Was it fear, disappointment, or rage, or a mix? The next morning, however, everything got out of control. They even proclaimed God would hate them, having brought them this far out of Egypt. They would rather perish in the desert or go back to Egypt with a new leader. Caleb, and now also Joshua, did everything they could to encourage them. In Numeri 14, 7 and uh, to 9, it says, the land we have explored is very good indeed. There is an abundance of everything there. If the Lord is pleased with us, and he was, he will take us there and give us the land. Just don't rebel against him. You don't have to be afraid of the people there. We will easily overpower them because they no longer have any protection. You, know, you need not be afraid of them the Lord is on your side. Why could Caleb react differently here? What can we learn from him when we are faced with huge challenges? When life situations overwhelm us and we feel too weak and unable to face them? They did some test with a monkey. The poor monkey was put in a cage and flooded with loud and glaring stimuli. stimuli. He was totally terrified. His stress level was extremely high. A new experiment was made and the monkey's best friend was placed in the cage with him in his greatest panic. 
his dress hormones dropped by half. He had someone by his side. Caleb reminded them that the Lord was on their side. He could only do this because he knew that God was also on his side. God even protected him when they took up the stones. The Israelites had become familiar with God. They ate his manna. They, ate, uh, they saw his cloud. For Caleb, however, familiarity had grown into a deep trust. Every experience they had on the desert journey had become a positive experience with God. His trust was not disappointed. God became more and more trustworthy to him. Trust is built through small steps of coming closer, through many small pieces of the mosaic. It is precisely in trials that familiarity turns into trust. Is this reason why God allows some challenges in our lives? One day, a man found a cocoon. A butterfly was struggling to break open the cocoon. This went on for hours. Then suddenly, nothing happened. Had the butterfly's strength run out? Could it no longer manage the last stretch? The man wanted to help him and cut open the last piece with a pair of scissors. No, the butterfly could easily free itself. But the butterfly's body was swollen, its wings small and wrinkly. The man waited for the wings to get bigger. They had to be able to carry his body. Nothing happened. The butterfly crawled around the ground. The man didn't know that the butterfly needed to fight its way out of the cocoon. It makes his wings strong that he can fly. Sometimes we want the all-round carefree package, but challenges make us stronger. Without them, we could never fly. Trust is essentially an expression of a good relationship. When the situation at the border escalated, God clearly showed how he felt. The Israelites did not stop insulting him. Psalm 78 says, how often they rebuked God. How often did they hurt him deeply there in the desert? Their repentance was not genuine. Every word they spoke was a lie. Nothing they said was sincere. Their trust in God was weak and unstable. Nevertheless, he remained merciful. What could he do but send them to the Red Sea in a waiting loop? Today, camel tracking trips through the desert are offered meditative uh, camel caravans as a vision search in the desert. Not as an adventure, but to experience silence, to gather new strength and as therapy for those who have lost their vision. God gave the Israelites a time to reflect, a time out. He remained a constant for them. Secure bonds create trust. So we find in the fifth book of Moses 32, he clasped, clasped, uh, he clasped them tightly in his arms, guarded them like the apple of his eye. And verse 11 says, he handled them like an eagle that teacheth 
teaches its young to fly. He shoes them out of the nest, accompanies their flight, and when they fall, he is there. He spread his wings beneath them and catches them. There were rough ups and downs in the waiting loop. Nevertheless, God was able to bring them a little further. And now comes a real surprise. What Balaam said when he blessed them, although he was ordered by Balak to curse them, he said to Balak, this people is different from all other peoples. If only one day I could die in peace like these upright people. He continued, God is not a man who lies. He is not like one of us who soon regrets his promises. What he says, he does. And what he announces, he accomplishes. Understand, I have a mission to bless and when God has given someone his blessing, I cannot take it back. He, God, finds no fault in the descendants of Jacob. He finds no evil in the Israelites. The Lord, their God, is with them. They celebrate him as their king. He brought them here from Egypt. He makes them as strong as a wild bull. Therefore, they say in amazement about Israel, look what God has done for them. Isn't that really amazing? Amen. <laughs> this text really encouraged me. God can also solve difficult cases. He can also deal with my deficiencies. And he is definitely the reliable constant in the relationship. I want to become a person like Caleb, not just because he felt as fit as 40 when he was already 85, but because he entered into a living relationship with God. He had realized that trust is like a bank account. You cannot just withdraw money, you also have to deposit it. Investing trust in God, opening up to him, staying in conversation with him, gaining experience in many small situations. Caleb's trust had grown. It gave, him his, it, it gave him backbone in difficult situations, such as the border to Canaan. But when it came to Hebron and the giants, he reappeared in the story. He didn't ask for a piece of land that had already been conquered, but wanted to stand by what he believed, that with God he, we can also tackle giant challenges. He wanted to conquer Hebron and take on the giants. What are the giants in your life, your problems, your disease, your sorrows, your marriage? What are the giants challenging you? God had promised him Hebron. He asked for his inheritance. In the same way, God gives us promises where we can take him at his word. What is your Hebron? And Caleb dwelt among the sons of Judah. Joshua gave Caleb part of the tribal territory of Judah. Now he could settle down in Hebron. But actually, his roots were settled in the trust to a great God. We don't always 
have an all-round carefree package here, but always a great God who carries us like a father, who doesn't mind giants, and who can repair and build up our trust in him. So let us become a person like Caleb. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this story and how you treat us the same, patiently and lovingly. We ask you to repair our trust in you. You know us better than we know ourselves. You know what we need and you know what you want to heal in us. We ask you to see more and more how great and trustworthy you are. Let us always turn to you. Help us to settle our roots in you. Amen. We praise the Lord for the wonderful sermon. As we're nearing to the end, I invite you to stand up as we sing our very last song. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that we will be. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the marshals. Rejoicing that to be when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, no shadow not a sign when we all get to heaven what a day what a day of rejoicing got to be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory let us then be true Trusting, saving every day, just one glimpse of Him in glory, we'll the toils of life repay. When we all, when we all get, get, to heaven, heaven, get to heaven, what a day, what a day of rejoicing that to be. Shout the victory Onward to the prize before us Soon his beauty will be whole Soon the pearly gates will open We shall tread the streets of gold When we all get to heaven, get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that to be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, get to heaven. What a day, 
what a day of rejoicing that to be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout victory Amen Amen church I don't know about you but I can't wait for that day when we all shall be in heaven. That's my prayer for you today. So we've come to the end of our worship this afternoon. We thank all of you for coming, and uh, thanks to our preacher today, Renate. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for reminding us of the need to trust in God. And we pray that this message will, will be in our bones and marrows all through the week. And uh, we want to thank the musicians for singing. Uh, we, we really thank you for coming every Sabbath. Pastor, uh, Mate, and um, uh, those of you who sing with your voices now, we hope we can join you in heaven to sing as you sing here on it. And for those at the back who make these things happen, Gabriel and the rest of the guys there, God bless you so much. And for all of you who are here and those who are viewing, may God also bless you. Now... I want to challenge you with this test in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 50. It is it's a challenge. It's, it's a challenge for our faith. The Bible says, Now this I say to you, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we all shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I thought you would say amen to that. Amen. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. O oh, that, where is your sting? O oh, head is, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and this last verse is interesting. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, that binds within our 